Sometimes at the end of a busy work day, you just don't have a lot of time to make dinner. That's why in this video, I'm gonna show you three complete dinners that can be made in 15 minutes. Okay, so I did set my timer for all three of these dinners and they took me exactly 15 minutes to make. First up, I'm gonna make a really great smash burger with a quick coleslaw-ish kind of salad. First things first, I have to heat my pan. I have a carbon steel pan here that I'm heating on medium high heat. And while that's heating up, I'm gonna shape my burger patties. I have about 400 grams of ground beef here. This is like lean, medium to lean ground beef. And I just split it into four individual portions and rolled those into balls. This package had enough for four burger patties, but we were only two people. So I cooked all four of them and I'm just gonna put the other two in the fridge. We can eat them tomorrow. Sprinkle those with a little bit of salt on one side. And then once the pan is hot, I can get them going. So I just put them into the pan, salt side down, and I used awkwardly, a metal spatula with like a pestle from a mortar and pestle to really squish these down. I didn't put any oil in the pan. I find that oil in this situation just creates a lot of extra smoke. It's already pretty smoky in here. I definitely had the fan on. But the idea here is you just wanna smash them down really, really thinly, as thinly as you can really, because you want as much surface area to be in contact with the pan as possible so you can get a nice crust. While those burgers are forming their crust, I came back to start the salad. I'm using Brussels sprouts here, but you could easily use cabbage. You could use any member of the brassica family, really, cauliflower, broccoli, kale. After cleaning the kind of coarse yellowy leaves off the outside, I just thinly sliced these Brussels sprouts. I'm a fairly fast chopper. Uh, if you're a less fast chopper, you can definitely use a mandolin. It helps a lot. And then I peeled and grated in one large carrot. I had a green onion kicking around too, so I decided to throw that in, but it wasn't in my original plan. About halfway through my Brussels sprout slicing, the burgers needed to be flipped. They really only take about a minute to a minute and a half on the first side, especially because the pan is so hot. Before flipping them over though, I did sprinkle the other side with a little bit of salt and a little sprinkle of garlic powder. This is just, something that my mom always put on burgers and it just has a bit of nostalgia for me so i like using it right away after you flip the burgers you're going to want to start thinking about cheese because you only need about a minute on the other side of the burger cooking so i grated some cheese i'm using havarti here but you can use any kind of cheese you want and then i sprinkle some cheese over the patties and around the same time i put some buns in the pan just kind of on top of the patties because I wanted them to warm up. And then I took everything off the heat and popped a lid on top of the pan so that everything kind of steams and stays warm. So for the dressing, I used the juice of one lemon, about three tablespoons of mayo, and then about a teaspoon of Cajun seasoning. I just wanted my dressing to have a little oomph and then just a little pinch of salt. Whisked that together, poured that over the carrots and the Brussels sprouts, Tossed it together. I like using my hands, especially because my bowl was obviously too small and it was just easier to use my clean hands. Finishing up the prep, all I needed to do was slice some red onion and some pickles, but these are obviously totally up to you. You can throw some lettuce on there if you want. You can throw some tomatoes if you want. Sometimes I make a burger sauce with just a bit of mayo, ketchup, and relish, hamburger relish, but I was out of mayo, so ketchup and mustard did the trick. This is such a good dinner. And to be honest, the whole burger process was over in like seven minutes. <laughs> so they were just sitting on the back burner off the heat for a while while I you know, finished the salad. The salad definitely took the longest because of all the chopping and grating. But yeah, great, quick, easy dinner. Easy to feed four people with just one pan and one bowl, total winner. The next 15 minute dinner is a simple veggie chili. I started by chopping an onion, getting it into a Dutch oven over pretty high heat. I'd say like medium high heat with a little bit of oil, sprinkled some salt in. And the best way to kind of quickly sweat and soften veggies like this is to put the lid on the pot. It really helps kind of keep the condensation in and it helps prevent them from burning. So I popped the lid on while I chopped a red pepper and then once that was chopped, I got that in and then I grated a carrot. I love the texture of grated carrot in this chili. I don't 
love the idea of like biting into a chunk of carrot. I don't know why. <laughs> I do, but not in this recipe. After sweating that down for a couple minutes, I added some spices. So I threw in about a teaspoon of cumin, about a tablespoon, maybe a little more of chili powder, a teaspoon of garlic powder, about half a teaspoon of smoked paprika, not too much, I don't like it too smoky, and about a teaspoon of dried oregano that I kind of crumbled in with my fingers. At this point, the veggies are softening, the spices have had a little chance to kind of get to know the veggies in the pan. So I threw in my beans. This is a large can of black beans. And I did take a minute with my wooden spoon to kind of just smush them a little bit. I like it when some of the beans are broken up. It helps to just kind of give a little bit of variety in the texture. Stirred those beans in and then added the tomatoes. So I have two small cans of diced tomatoes in tomato sauce. This is kind of important because sometimes you open a can of tomatoes and they're really watery. These ones are actually really quite thick and even the juice that they're suspended in, it's like sauce, it's not water. I did look for fire roasted tomatoes, totally would have used them if I had them, but I didn't. And because we don't have a lot of time to develop much flavor here, I decided to throw in a can of pickled green chilies. These are already chopped, just to add a little extra dimension of flavor. That and the smoked paprika really helps when you don't have a lot of time for all these things to cook together. Gave that a really good stir, tasted it for seasoning, decided it needed a little bit of sweetness, so I threw in a little glug of sweet chili sauce. If I didn't have sweet chili sauce, I would have used ketchup here. Just for a little hint of sweetness. I love that in chili. At the end of all that, I had about three minutes left over to kind of just pop the lid on and let things simmer together. Of course, if you had more time, you could just leave this on low and then get on with your day, wrangle your family and tell them dinner's ready and that process always takes a while, but this is ready to eat right away. It'd be great with some noodles, it'd be great with some bread or a bun, just some tortillas or tortilla chips or some steamed white rice or just on its own. This last one is a total banger. I actually had never made it before. I basically just conjured it up and decided to make it and I'm gonna make this again and again and I'll probably write a recipe for it as well a proper recipe because it's really, really good. It's kind of a creamy red pesto gnocchi and it's got some ground pork and oyster mushrooms in it. It's delicious. Whenever you're in a hurry and you want some boiling water fast, it's always a good idea to fill up your electric kettle if you have one and bring that to a boil. It comes to a boil way faster than a pot on a stove. So that was the first thing I did. Filled up my kettle, came over and started cooking my sauce. I have a large stainless steel pan here. I cranked it to about medium high heat again and added a little bit of oil and then I threw in my ground pork. So this is lean ground pork. You could totally use ground turkey, ground chicken, ground beef, ground impossible burger or whatever. I tried to kind of flatten it out in the pan so that I could get some good browning for some good flavor development early on. I added about a teaspoon of salt to the pork as well. While that was cooking, I prepped my oyster mushrooms. So I have 250 grams of oyster mushrooms here and I just kind of tore them up into little pieces. Some of mine were bigger, some of mine were smaller. I kind of like that. I like the kind of randomness of oyster mushrooms, but if you want more uniformity, you can definitely chop them. Once the pork was starting to get really nice and brown, I started moving it around a bit with my spatula, just breaking it up, flipping it over. This cooks really quickly. At that point, I threw in some garlic, about two cloves, added the oyster mushrooms to the pork. At this point, the pan was starting to develop some really nice brown bits, so I deglazed the pan with some dry vermouth. I love dry vermouth with mushrooms for some reason. I just think it's a really good combo. If you have white wine, you can also use that. Or you can just use a splash of water if you don't have either. At this point, the water is boiled, so I poured that into the pot. That took about 30 seconds to kind of come back to the boil, and then I seasoned the water with some salt. And I have some pre-made gnocchi here. I love using this stuff because it's fairly inexpensive and it's really quick to cook. It only takes two minutes to actually boil. At this point, the pork, the mushrooms, the wine are all kind of simmering away. I have some dried thyme that I sprinkled in there. It's probably about a half teaspoon or so of dried thyme or about, you know, three sprigs of fresh thyme. And then I made the kind of saucy component of the sauce, which is kind of a cool technique. 
So you know when you make carbonara and you use egg yolks and cheese and pasta water? Well, this isn't carbonara, but it uses that same technique. So I got two eggs. I just separated the white from the yolk. I'm gonna use the whites for breakfast tomorrow morning or something. Obviously I'll add some whole eggs to that too. I'm not having like an egg white omelet or anything. Into the yolks I added about two tablespoons of grated Parmesan cheese. And then I have some red pesto here. So this is like a sun-dried tomato pesto type thing. I feel like you can find this just about everywhere these days. You could also use green pesto, but I really like the red one here. So I scooped about half of a jar into the egg yolks and the cheese, whisked that together. And then at this point, the gnocchi was done. So I drained it, saved some of the pasta water, slowly poured some of the pasta water into the jug with the yolks and the pesto, and that's gonna become my sauce. And then I added the gnocchi to the pork and the mushroom mixture, mix that all together, turn off the heat because I don't want the yolks to cook too much, and then poured the pesto yolk pasta water mixture into the pan. And this was so good. It's good to have some extra pasta water at this point because you might want to make some adjustments. I ended up adding quite a bit more pasta water after the fact because things kind of thickened up really quickly. The gnocchi is quite starchy, so it really wants to kind of thicken. And then I just tasted it for seasoning. It was so spot on. I plated it up and then I wanted some green stuff on top. So I just had these microgreens. but if you had fresh parsley, arugula, something like that, that would be great. This is such a good dinner. I feel like I'm gonna be making this one a lot. So there you go. There's three super easy, super quick dinners, 15 minutes and you've got a full complete dinner on the table. I hope you love them. I hope your family loves them. And let me know if you'd like more videos like this. I have a feeling we're all kind of in the market for some quick, easy dinner ideas. So I'm happy to do more of this. Plus somebody commented on my video last week that the pasta and pasta sauce was very imbalanced nutritionally, which <laughs> I don't disagree with. It's just literally noodle uh, and butter. <laughs> but I'm also not here to give you nutrition advice. But if you want me to make sure things are more balanced, let me know. Okay, thanks so much for joining me this week and I'll see you next time.